If you checked out my last video, you know we talked about maps and some ways to build them together with your younger players. Now that we have all these rich settings or locations, it's time to fill them up with NPCs to interact with. We're going to need a bunch of names and faces to go with them. Let's talk about some of the ways to keep all those NPCs straight in your head and shine the spotlight on them as you critical your save versus Justin. So I can do like two character voices, and even those aren't very different from each other. So how can I fill up a town with cool characters that players want to seek out over and over again? I want non-player characters to be interesting, unique, and fun for me to play. I also want those NPCs to be visually represented at the table. Some NPCs might just allow the characters to chew on the scenery for a bit and flesh out the personality of the world they're in. Others will have their own agendas for their characters, pulling them into quests or providing information. These will grow over time, with some favorites becoming regulars in your game. I'm sure you've already wrestled with the first step on getting there, and that's simply giving the NPC a name. To borrow a term from D&D 3.5, this is often a step that has caught me flat-footed. When I'm put on the spot to come up with a name, I often just stall and kind of look around the room for inspiration, or just start piecing together syllables until a name forms. Sure, his name is Cherindor, or if that doesn't work, I might fall back on some common-sounding names that don't quite fit in a D&D world, like Bob or Phil which can be entertaining, I suppose. Sometimes I might panic and call out a player to give me an NPC name, but at my table at least, I know they're going to come up with something ridiculous on purpose, like Phil Jr. or Bob the Third. Again, that might be fine, and everyone at the table might have a good laugh, but if you want to minimize the awkward pauses and add some level of forethought to your names, there's some great resources out there. Typically, I'll start a 3x5 card and just start adding names as I think of them or get inspired by something. Of course, the D&D Player's Handbook is a great place to start. Lists of names are included for each race, which is something I totally forgot about until making this video. Another good source for me is video games. Video game designers have already gone through this for you. Games like Skyrim or Assassin's Creed have a ton of NPCs, and most of them have names that can fit into a typical D&D world. I wouldn't steal any major character names. They might be too recognizable and a bit distracting, but characters in side quests or shopkeepers? I think they're a fair game. There are also books of names already out there. Here's a couple I use. When I found this one at a game store back at the dawn of gaming, it was like finding the one ring. It was my precious. I don't think you can still find it in print, but I did see it available on DriveThruRPG. A quick search shows a number of others available as well from independent publishers. These are typically only like a dollar or two. This next one though, the Story Game Names Project, is a bit more refined, and you can still get it print on demand. This has become my go-to source for names, and has a permanent spot on my desk. I'll provide a link to all these below. The Curse of Strahd campaign actually provides a list of names for you, which is awesome and I think would be a great addition to any published adventure. If you're looking for a free online source, check out the Fantasy Names Generator at fantasynamesgenerator.com. They have a ton of lists, and not just for NPCs, but also location names, ship names, or there's even some oddly specific lists like Yeti names, so it's definitely worth checking out. A name is a great starting point, but the next thing I like to do is put a face to those names with a portrait card like one of these. These cards are from Paizo, who's been publishing them for years for their Pathfinder role-playing game. Of course, they can be used in any fantasy RPG. They're simply a cool portrait on one side and room for a name and notes on the back. Or if you're a freak about messing up your cards or books like me, you could always use a sticky note. Wizards of the Coast provided some portrait cards for main NPCs in their D&D's Essentials kit, featuring the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak adventure. But sadly, they're missing from the recent starter box featuring the Dragons of Stormwreck Isle adventure. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer if you've already produced the art. If you're following Questing Beast channel, you might have seen this great video he did on how to quickly and cheaply produce a bunch of tokens to use in your D&D games using old Magic the Gathering cards. You can see where this would be another great source of NPC portrait cards as well. Again, you know, with the sticky notes. Some of their packs are even specific to Dungeons & Dragons and include art cards like these. At my table, I quickly build up a stack of named NPC cards, and one thing I like to do to keep them organized is use a card holder like this. I guess they make these for hardcore card game players, presumably to free up your hands for snacks and drinks. Also great for kids who can't hold like 20 UNO cards at once. I like to keep one right in front of my DM screen facing the players, and as NPCs are introduced, place them here as a visual cue. I suppose you could also clip those cards to your GM screen if you use one. That saves some space, but I actually like the dynamic nature of the card stand, where you can kind of move cards forward and backwards to spotlight who the characters are interacting with. Another kind of cool benefit of using cards like this is providing a good visual focus when you're recapping what happened in the previous game. 
I'll often describe what happened in the last game as I go through my deck of cards, holding them up to spotlight them and putting them in the card holder as a reminder. We're talking about NPCs now, but this can also be used along with monster cards or item cards, or even quest cards that I've seen available in some games. That's a great topic for another video, but for now, thanks for checking out this one. Please drop a comment or click all the things to help spread the word, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you.